I'm Sean Kelly, the voice of the Gators, and welcome to the Gator Tales podcast with Sean Kelly, episode number 26. Greetings from Nashville, Tennessee. Music City is the host again of the SEC Men's Basketball Tournament. I'm on the road with the team, and the Gators begin play on Thursday night against the Georgia Bulldogs, looking to keep a win streak alive against the Bulldogs as Florida has defeated their arch rival in 10 straight meetings, including two this year. A win for the Gators would then set them up for a round three matchup against Alabama, the defending champ of the SEC Men's Basketball Tournament. The Crimson Tide are looking to be the first repeat SEC Tournament champions since Kentucky did it four times in a row. Well, we're all basketball on this week's podcast. Walter Clayton Jr., Torian Green, Scott Strickland. We'll hear from all of them as we set you up on this episode of the Gator Tales podcast. We'll begin with Walter Clayton Jr. in just a moment. Clayton Jr. is leading the team in scoring and once again has gone north of 20 points down the stretch of the season. He's been a part of an attack that finds two of Florida's guards as members of all SEC teams. Clayton, of course, a second team all SEC guard, and his backcourt mate, Zion Pullen, is a first team all SEC guard for this season. Both young men are transfers into the program for Todd Golden. They've had a massive impact here in Golden's second season and have the Gators set up for perhaps a tournament run and then a berth in the NCAA tournament. We'll talk to Walter Clayton about this run, his teammate Zion Pullen, what it means to be an all-SEC guard after being transferred into Florida from Iona. Then Torian Green joins us. It's a big week for the former Gator player and now assistant coach, He's honored as an SEC legend this week. And why not? The two-time national champ also won this tournament on three different occasions. In fact, Torian Green only lost one postseason game in his college career. We'll talk to Torian about being honored this week and about what this team could be like this postseason. And finally, Ask the AD with Scott Strickland. The Florida Director of Athletics this week touches on the impact of a possible NCAA tournament berth for the Gators, what it does for the Florida brand, and what it means, of course, for Todd Golden in his second year of the program. Oh, and one last note, non-basketball related. Back in the fall on this podcast, we brought you to the UF Hockey Club team. Well, that team resumed their schedule in January and has now won a national championship in club collegiate hockey. Congratulations to the Ice Gators on a fine season and, of course, a national championship. So, without further ado, men's basketball, a whole lot of it here from Nashville, next. Gator Tales with Sean Kelly is presented by UF Health. UF Health has locations throughout Florida, including Gainesville, Jacksonville, St. Augustine, Leesburg, and the Villages, and we're growing. Compassionate care and world-class outcomes. That's our game plan. Visit ufhealth.org to learn more. Our podcast is also brought to you by Pet Paradise. Gator fans, for pet fanatics like you, there's only one place who goes all out for your pet the way you do. Boarding, grooming, day camp, and veterinary services, all in one convenient location. Pet Paradise and New Day Veterinary Care. Finally, complete pet health care is here for Gator Nation. Walter Clayton Jr., all SEC guard. How does that sound, my friend? Uh sound good. You know, appreciative of the of the accolade. Just appreciate my teammates, coaching staff, everybody who helped me get that award. It's amazing to think that it wasn't too long ago you were a two sports star, you were trying to figure out where you'd play college basketball. Everybody, Walter, wanted you for football, right? Yes, sir. Not as many for basketball. And here we are now, just a short time later, we're talking about you as one of the best guards in the Southeastern Conference. Does that strike you as odd or did you see it coming maybe before all of us did? Uh, I wouldn't say striking me as odd, but it definitely came a long way, I would say that. You know, obviously didn't know I would be here going up there to New York, going to Iona, but just you know, just going up there and everything working out how I did, I'm just, you know, thankful. Does it make it feel extra special then as a result of that? Um, Coming back home, yeah, yeah. I, w- I would say that for sure. 
you know, Zion's kind of in the similar mode of maybe under recruited a little bit for basketball coming out of high school, and here he is with you as all SEC. It almost makes me think that you guys play with a little bit of a chip on your shoulder because of that. Is that fair? Are we ready to finally talk about that? Yeah, I think it's I think it's fair to say. You know, obviously coming from it was a high major where both of us was at. You know, obviously it was a lot of doubt whether our games would translate and things like that. So I think that'd be fair to say. When it when it when I watch the two of you play right now, it feels like you two have been together for longer than six to nine months. I, so I'm surprised. Mm-hmm. Were you surprised that it would come together like this? First time teammates? Uh, no, nah, not really. You know, um, Zion got a great personality. He got a great game, passed the ball well, also scores. So just us uh, been in the backcourt. You know, obviously just both good basketball players in my eyes you just I don't know I feel like our games work perfectly me being able to stretch the floor shoot the three and ZP just able to get to the middle of the floor kick out and work his floater game who adapted to who um I don't know I think our games just kind of messed messed together well so it wasn't really too much adapting when we talk about a guard heavy team it's one that usually holds the ball more yet you guys share the ball willingly and at the same time the other side of that argument is you guys are combined for you know 34 plus points per ball game are the gators guard heavy uh i wouldn't say guard heavy i think we i think we're very well balanced very well balanced you know we got tyrese down there in the post we got condo in the post mike getting a lot of offensive rebounds so i think we're just a very well balanced team how did your game evolve over this past season over this past season um evolve uh trying how are you different different I think I've um, towards the end of this season I've tried to come become better defensively. I'll say that um, probably could shoot the ball a little better, more efficiently. I ain't gonna lie, but yeah, I, I'll say defensive side of the ball. You led the country last year in free throw percentage. Earlier this year, it, it looked different, yeah. and now all of a sudden you're shooting like ninety percent in conference play. When did it come back to you? Um, just I don't know somewhere throughout the season, just being able to hit shots or make them from the free throw line. So. I don't know, just somewhere in the season. Rough, rough, beginning of the season was definitely a rough start, though. Yeah. Um, do you feel like you're a part of something special at Florida in that they're going to go to the tournament for the first time in three years? There's there's a renewed fun feeling around this ball club. Do you do you take some ownership of that? Uh, definitely. I think uh, everybody on the team should take some ownership of that. You know, obviously it ain't a very easy feat, you know, making it to the tournament. You know, let alone being at large. So, you know, just I think everybody should, you know, take ownership of that. I think we've worked very hard to get to that point. Tell me about your term- tournament basketball experience at any level. What do you what do you know? What do you enjoy about it? About uh, March Madness? About either March Madness or a conference tournament like you guys will embark upon this week. What is it about tournament play that's different? Uh, obviously a neutral site. So that's one thing. Uh, neutral site. Just I know the Mac was a little... Kind of, it was, I don't know how. Uh, board, what is it? What is it? What was Boardwalk called? What yeah, is it? Just a neutral side arena, yeah, right? Yeah, talking about Nashville. What is that though? Oh, Bridgestone Arena. Yeah, Bridgestone yeah. Arena. I don't know how it is, but it Mac, very open space, just court kind of in the middle, so it was a little quiet in there. But um, I don't know, man. Just neutral side. You got to bring your A game. Everybody end of the season, so everybody knows everybody's game. I think it's gonna come down to you know who wanted more. I think that's a big thing about these tournament games. You became a dad earlier this season. What have you learned? Uh, I asked you what you learned about your game. What did you learn about being a father? Uh, I've been learning a lot. My first thing I learned was how to swaddle. You know, that was one of the first things I learned. And also just whatever she wants, she gets. That's the other thing. So that's it. Still learning, still going on with that process, but that's what I've learned. Uh, early reports that she's a daddy's girl. Is that accurate? I definitely say that's accurate. Yeah. She don't cry as much with me, so I definitely agree with that. When you think about what lies ahead, um, yeah, I feel like it's the situation where everything you want is right there in front of you. Have you had that in your life before? Um, as far as what, what seeing like, well, I mean, you were a two-time state champ in high school. Mm-hmm. Similar sense that you have you have the tools around you to to take something far. And you accomplish that. Now you're going to do that at this level for the first time. So I guess that's the, the experience I'm asking about. Um, probably say, yeah, this is the first time, you know, as, as far as having everything in front of me, just, and I wouldn't say it's the first time. It's been time before. You just, yeah. I think it all just, you know, I try not to look too far ahead. You no, know, obviously just take it day by day and just work. So that's kind of how I look at it. Is there anything from a high school cha- championship run that you can 
relate to this level too? For sure. Like kind of like I said, uh, the neutral site games, especially because neutral, neutral site was a final four stuff like that. Just being a tougher team, you know, it's the end of the season. Everybody's scout going to be down to a T. Everybody going to know what you do, your tendencies. So I think just going out there and just playing hard as you can, uh, not making as many mistakes and just who who gonna, who wants it more. Yeah. Is it more special because this is the University of Florida and you're a, from nearby the Lakeland area, if you will? Is that added to your pleasure here? Nah, for sure. Definitely has. Yeah. In what way? Just being a home, home state guy. You know, growing up, obviously, uh, touring, all them guys, they had great success, 06, 07 years. So just, um, I was still a, young, a little kid, but, you know, just knowing that uh, history of Gator basketball and just trying to get it back to that point and just being a part of it. Yeah, and it's your home school, and yet this has only been the one season so far for you. There's a lot of, I think, misconception about transfer portal guys and their allegiances and whatnot. What would you, what would you try to take away from that conversation? What, what don't we know about being a transfer porter player like yourself? Um, just, I think some people question why people transfer. I think that's a big part of everybody looking at things. But I just think, you know, a lot of us, most of us transferring, you know, we're just trying to put ourselves and our families in a better situation. So I think that's what it comes down to, just putting ourselves in a better situation and just working on what we got. Did you ever think you'd be one of those transfer portal players? Um, I... I never really thought about it until we had got to that point. So I, I didn't. I didn't think I was. But yeah. we here. Here we are now. It's so different. I mean, when you when you came into college sports, we really didn't have kind of movement like this. You got to you got to be a part of it on the fly. How would you advise another young man who may be in a similar situation as to what you were this time last year? Uh, just take it day by day. You know, don't look far ahead. You know, obviously work. You know. Um, if opportunities, if you, you know, do what you're supposed to do on a daily basis, opportunities will arise. And if you have a chance to just better your life going to a bigger school or school that's just better for your situation, then I would advise them to do it. All right. Anything else that you're thinking about these days as we go into postseason play? Just win. It's a good way to end it, I think. Go Gators, Walter. Gators. Dorian Green, welcome to Nashville. This is where you and others will be honored as SEC legends this year. I know you and I have already talked about it, but here it is. The week is here. Are you excited about being a part of all the festivities? Yeah, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited for our guys. I'm excited to go compete for a, a SEC championship as a uh, as a coach now. But, uh, you know, obviously I'm excited to, to receive the award along with the other guys that are getting honored, man. It's just... Um, it's just an honor, honestly, man. It's a lot of great players that came through the SEC. Um, and, you know, fortunately, you know, our team was able to accomplish a lot of things. And, you know, I was able to contribute and, and be a big part of that. And, you know, it'll be a fun weekend. And, you know, I'm happy my parents are going to be here. And uh, so I'll be able to see them and they'll be able to see me get the award as well. How did they find out? Did you call them and say, hey, mom, hey, dad, guess what? Um, actually, <laughs> actually, my lady called. My my girl called my mom and told her uh, we were on Facetime. She's like, "Did you tell your mom what you uh, what happened at practice today?" And I forgot. And I was like, "Oh yeah." Mom. And you know, I, I told her that you know the team surprised me after practice and and told me that uh, I was getting honored as an SEC legend. So, who else is being honored with you that you would really like to spend some time with? Well, obviously, I've known Richard Hendricks for a while. Um, you know, I've known Richard Hendricks since, you know, playing against him in high school. Um, you know, so him, um, Daryl uh, Mitchell, uh, the guard from LSU, you know, we had a lot of good battles. It'll be good to catch up and, and talk to him as well. Um, and I'm sure I'll see a lot of other familiar pa- faces, but those are the main two that I'm looking forward to seeing. What do they run you through? Is there a dinner? Is there a banquet? How, how do they... Um Salute you guys. I believe there's a dinner. I think uh, our Dobo Mike has all that stuff for me. So I, uh, I'm going to get there and just figure it out as we go. But I think they have a dinner. And then um, we're getting honored at halftime of, of my game, our game. And then um, I think game 11, whenever game 11 is. You won this thing three times as a player, didn't you? Yes, three times. <laughs> three times. And, um, you know, it was all tough, tough, uh, tough games. Um, but it, it, it was awesome, man. I I remember those days like they were yesterday and, uh, you know, the same thing, the same approach that we've had as a team when I played is the same thing that I'm telling these guys, man, just one game at a time. Yeah, well, you and I were trying to figure up your postseason record the other day. I think we were somewhere like around 21 and 
one. Yeah. The one that we were for sure about was the one. You only lost one postseason game. No, how many people get to do that, Torian? Not a lot. Not a lot. And, um, you know, it sounds like it, it's, it's easy, but it's not, man. Um, you know, it's just a testament to the guys that I play with, you know, our coaching staff, you know, keeping us humble, keeping us locked in, keeping us on edge. Um, you know, it was a, it was a total... You know, sounds corny, but it was a total team effort from, yeah. you know, the players to the coaching staff. When you're in the middle of something like that, do you realize how great it is? Are you able to understand it as you're stepping through it in real time? You, when you're going through it through real time, it, it's you're just so in the moment that, like, you know you're winning. And, you know, that's what you're really thinking about, winning, winning and, and get to the next round. And, um, you know, obviously it's been about almost 20 years, I think, Um not that long, Not that Torian. Long, but close, but yeah. almost, almost. <laughs> and you know, I, you know, obviously, as the years go by, you you, be, you become more appreciative of it. You know, you know, all the you think about all the obstacles, all the good times, all the bad times, all the difficult times, getting kicked out of practice. Uh, you know, you, you come to appreciate all that, and, and you know, you appreciate you know your growth as a as an individual, and as well as the growth of a team. You know, throughout the season. Why did you guys trust Billy Donovan the way you did? He was honest with us, man. He was honest with us. Uh, we knew he cared about us. Um, he was on our ass, man, every day. Uh, but, you know, we knew that he was a winner. He wanted to win. And, you know, the players on that team had the same identity as he did. You know, we all wanted to win. We were all tough, tough-minded, tough-nosed. And, you know, we just... Honestly, we all worked well together. You know, we listened to Coach D. We were receptive to his coaching, to all the advice he was giving us, just about, you know, the trials and errors of getting to the championship. So, you know, we were a receptive group, and, you know, Coach Donovan, he deserves all the credit. You know, Coach Grant, you know, Coach Jones, you know, we had an elite coaching staff, and, you know, it's a testament to those guys leading the way and us following them. You're not the only one off of those teams that's been an SEC legend. Wasn't Chris last year the SEC legend representing Florida? Yep, C. Rich represented yeah. Florida last year, man. So, uh, you know, I'm sure you could go down. You know, we got to get Lee Hump in there next. I don't know when Lee Hump's going to get honored. Is Lee Hump in the? He has not been honored as an Come SEC on, legend. Y'all got to get my man Lee Hump, man, in, the, in, the, in, that, in that Hall of Fame, man. Yeah. One of the best three-point shooters to ever play in the SEC, to ever play in the NCAA, honestly. Um, got to give his got to give his due, man. So, NCAA, SEC, go ahead, get my man Lee Hump in there next year. Yeah. What will you teach this group about adversity? Because you won so much. There had to be a time, though, where maybe you thought, hey, they got us this time, or we're on the, we could lose this game, and you didn't. So how do you, how do you translate that or teach that down the road? Stay poised. Um stay connected and play until that final whistle blow because you know there's a lot of stuff that can happen in a game and you know it ain't called March Madness for no reason reason. Uh, last thing is this is there a special fit uh, that you have picked out to be honored in this week here in Nashville well I know during during our game I'm gonna be wearing my coach's fit so I'm gonna be wearing that but uh, during the other one I haven't gotten it yet but I'm gonna get one for sure Mm -hmm. I expect greatness (laughs) Tori Green congratulations appreciate it Time now for Ask the AD. We're back in the office of Director of Athletics, Scott Strickland, who I catch here right before he heads for Nashville in the Southeastern Conference Men's Basketball Tournament. That must mean, Scott, that Selection Sunday is coming up. It is this weekend, and we expect the Florida Gators for the first time in about three years to be back in the field of 68. What does that mean for the Florida brand and maybe even more specifically for Todd Golden's program in his second year? Um, well, obviously, it's, it's exciting. For, for Todd and and uh, to see what uh, the team has has put together under his leadership this year, um, you know, candidly, this is this is where we we talk about this, right? We expect Gator all of our teams. We have twenty one sports. We expect them all to compete for championships. That's that's the expectation of Gator Nation, and um, so it feels right for Florida men's basketball to be back in the NCAA tournament. Uh, feel pretty good at this point that that they'll hear their name called on Selection Sunday and. Um, it'll be, you know, we, uh, Gators obviously have a lot of success and a lot of tradition and history of, of not just making the tournament. I think it's, uh, you know, 22 times in the past the Gators have been in the tournament, but doing really well, right? A couple of national titles, five Final Fours, uh, a lot of great memories 
and, and a lot of the iconic moments in Gator lore have occurred in this tournament. And so for uh, for Todd in, in his second year here at UF to position that team, um, the way he's built the roster, the way he's built his staff and, and the culture that's been created there, uh, for them to be rewarded with this kind of season and, and have a chance to, to go play in the games that everybody really cares about in March is pretty special. With a fan base like the Gators have nationally and internationally, Scott, it sure is nice to see, obviously, orange and blue on that stage. But doesn't it engage our fans in a way that's even more so than all of us already do in that tournament? Oh, absolutely. There's, there's few things that capture uh, the attention of the, of the casual sports fan uh, the way March Madness does. And if you think about it, you could probably name on, on, your, you know, on one hand four or five events over the course of a calendar in pro and college that really captivate people. And so uh, the diehards, the people that listen to this podcast regularly or tune in to, to every broadcast uh, who know the, the rotation of the players, they're, they're going to be engaged regardless. But you, you have an opportunity when you play uh, in the NCAA men's basketball tournament for people who may have followed a score here and there, really don't know our roster very well. They're going to lock in. They're going to, because that logo still matters, right? The Gator head is really important. Yeah. And, and um, they're going to, a lot of, a lot of the country is going to learn the story of, of this Gators basketball team and and maybe develop a, a deeper connection with the university at large uh, because of what they're going to see in the weeks ahead. Thanks as always, Scott. And it's awfully great to say, I'll see you at the big dance. We'll be there. Go Gators. Well, that's a wrap for episode number 26. I hope to be here in Nashville for a good long run, like as in through Sunday at a possible championship game for the Gators on Sunday afternoon. Then all eyes on the television, Selection Sunday could be another berth for the Gators in the NCAA tournament, a return for them in three years. A big thanks to our guests this week, Walter Clayton Jr., Torian Green, and of course, Athletic Director Scott Strickland. Next week, hard to say where we'll be and where we'll tape our next episode of the Gator Tales podcast with Sean Kelly. Big thanks to our sponsors, as always, UF Health and Pet Paradise. Thanks again for allowing us to be a part of your day. And as always, go Gators.